Hi everyone, I'm really excited today because not only am I getting to show you a brand new technique for your dies and your stamps, but I also get to share this collaboration with my lovely friend Corinne Robinson. So I've known Corinne for years, uh, we used to work together and now we are collaborating on YouTube. Corinne has quite a new um, YouTube channel, so definitely make sure you pop over there. I'll link it down below for you so you can go and give her a new subscribe, give her some love. She's also going to be using the Textures Monoprint collection. So this is what we're focusing on today. Corinne has the hexagons, I've got the Moroccan designs, and we're both going to create something lovely for you to learn from. Now not only are we going to be showing you techniques, we are also offering you the chance to win some of the products from the Textures Monoprint collection. The details again are down below, but essentially you are going to get to win a cover plate die, the matching stamps, an alphabet set and an embossing folder. And they're all from the same collection, but you can choose whether you go for diamonds, Moroccan style or the hexagons. All you need to do to enter is pop along to the Craft Stash blog once you've subscribed to my channel and and Corinne's channel. Again, details down below, make sure you enter as soon as possible to be in with a chance of winning. So to create the stained glass effect, you're going to need some heat resistant acetate. And it's really important that this is heat resistant acetate and not your average acetate. I use the Crafters Companion brand, but there's lots of brands that do this. I just find this one easy to get hold of and it's the one I've always used. I know it works without any warping. You're also going to need a cover plate die. So this is going to kind of provide like the lead work between um, your windows as such and then also the stamps for decoration inside your windows. Now this will work with the hexagons, the Moroccan designs and also the diamonds in the entire monoprint collection. You're also going to need some mirror cards and I've gone for one that's a little bit like a brushed metal effect just to give us less shine within the lead work as such of the stained glass. And then you also need a matching or coordinating embossing powder. Again, I've gone for one that's not got a sparkle in it. It's kind of just a plain, um, not quite a matte, but just a plain silver. Like I say, no glitter or anything in there either. Now, the last thing you're going to need is something to color your acetate with, and that would be something like your alcohol pens or alcohol inks. So the first thing to do is to die cut the cover plate die from your mirror card. Now I'm going to cut the entire piece and then I'm going to decide later whether I'm actually going to use it all or trim it down for a smaller card. So the cover plate die is cut absolutely beautifully and they give you this really lovely fine border. That's going to be perfect for inside of the stained glass. Now I'm going to place my die cut down and I'm going to put my heat resistant acetate, this has been cut down in half from the A4 sheet, so I'm going to put that directly on top and I'm going to tape this as well just to keep everything in place for now. Um, I'm going to trim my acetate down a little bit later um, but this is just going to hold it where I need it for the time being, so just the two corners taped there with a the low tack tape. Then I'm going to take my stamps, now I really like um, ones that are not too um, too slim or um, too open, I like this effect and I like this effect. These three for me are a little bit too bold, so I'm going to stick with these two. Maybe this one actually, I think this one's quite nice as well. Um, we shall see as we work through. But I'm going to be stamping these into the shapes like so and because I've got that die cut underneath I can perfectly see exactly where I need to be stamping. So with my stamp on the acrylic block here I'm going to use black VersaFine and um, this is so that you can see what I'm doing but also I can see what I'm doing where I've gone and this won't dry on the acetate for a very long time so I've got plenty of time to work with this and I'm just going to go over the top of one of the spaces, press down hard but centrally i'm not i'm not wanting to slide or accidentally slip on the acetate so i'm being very careful here make sure i've got everything there perfect and then i'm going to repeat that across the rest of the design and i'm going to switch up the stamps i use so i'm going to do a few of these and then i'll do a few of another design as well so now i've filled my background i can take 
my die cut away and I can peel off with the low tack tape. Now I've got a little bit of sliding about on the acetate but not too much and I think the embossing powder is going to hide a lot of this. So I'm now going to cover over my ink with my silver embossing powder. I would do this in the same way as if I was working on paper rather than acetate. So just shake it around, make sure it's capturing all of the areas that are needed. A scrap piece of paper is perfect for capturing the bits that aren't needed, like the excess. And then you can give this a flick and hopefully off should jump any of that static that's left over. There we go. You can be quite hard with it because that ink is going to hold on to all of the uh, silver powder where it's needed. And then pop this excess back into the pot. And now it's time to heat set. So again, in the same way as if I was using just paper, I'm going to heat set this powder with my heat gun, moving it around, not holding it in one area for too long. As soon as the powder's melted, I'll move on to somewhere else. Now, typically I forgot to record the last part that I've just done. So I'm going to talk you through it instead. As you can see, I've added color. So we heat embossed our acetate, our heat resistant acetate. And once you get the silver um, outline over the top, it looks absolutely beautiful. But I turned it over and worked on the reverse where we could still see the black ink coming through. And I've just covered that in three different colors of alcohol inks, just allowing them to mix on the surface. I did use a blending foam a little bit to dab and just kind of manipulate where they went a touch, but not too much. Some areas I just dripped some of the alcohol ink and let that spread on its own. So I didn't overwork it too much. And as you can see, once that's dry, you can turn that over and you can really see those beautiful stained glass colors coming through. So once you place this over the top, neatening up all of those edges, look how stunning that looks. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? So what I'm going to do is now adhere this to my acetate. And I'm going to do this with a, a permanent or non repositionable um, adhesive, a spray adhesive. Place this on, trim the edges, and then put this onto a card base. So I've chosen a square die that's going to capture um, a small amount of this panel, but enough to show the beautiful effect. And I'm going to die cut this into um, my card base. Now I could go into my card base directly, but I think to keep things neat, I'm actually going to cut myself a second panel. I might even emboss it as well, but it, within the monoprint collection, there's some beautiful embossing folders. So emboss it so it's got some texture, um, with the panel in and then put the acetate behind that panel rather than going into the card base and then making it a little bit weaker as well. So we have some great dimensional embossing folders that are part of the monoprint collection. Uh, the idea with these is that they look three dimensional, they look 3D, but they're coming to you at a price of 2D embossing folders because they're not actually 3D. It's just uh, the way we've designed them makes them look three dimensional. So I think I'm going to go subtle and I'm going to use the Waves embossing folder just to emboss a little bit, just a tiny bit of texture into this panel. How cool is that for an embossing folder? Okay, so now I need to get my panel and trim this to size, but I need to stick this in place. So I'm going to trim the excess off afterwards. Just make sure that that's central. I think there will be absolutely perfect. So I'm using double-sided tape here to stick the frame down on top of the acetate and then I'm going to cut out the acetate to the correct shape and then stick that all down onto my card base using foam tape. So I've put some paper down because some of my alcohol ink is still a little bit damp underneath. So I'm just going to protect my desk, putting that down and make sure that that's dry before I stick the foam tape onto the back. But as you can see there, I've used double-sided tape to stick my frame on. And now I can use either a guillotine, a trimmer, or my trusty scissors, which I like to use to just trim around the edges here and neaten everything up. 
Now the monoprint collection has a great range of decorative letters, these are alphabet dies that you can place on your card, but for today I'm going to keep it simple because I want the stained glass to be the focal point of the card, I don't want anything to overshadow that, so I'm going to be using my sentiments for all paper pack in instead, something simple like sent to you with love, I'm going to do it in black so it still stands out but doesn't, like I say, take away from the stunning colours that are inside that stained glass panel. So there's my finished card. Now, of course, don't forget you've got the chance if you're watching this before the 1st of April 2020 four um, to win a selection of the monoprint collection that will include a cover plate die the matching stamps the alphabets and one of the embossing folders so you can choose your design as well all you need to do is have a look in the description the details are there pop along to the craft stash blog to enter but make sure that you have subscribed to my channel and subscribe to Corinne's channel as well and give her video a thumbs up I'm so pleased she agreed to collaborate with me today and I'm pleased that you've joined us too leave me a comment let me know what you think of this technique will you be trying it out and I'll speak to you all again very soon take care everybody